what pretty curls. Sandy, just the other side. That's my boss, Charlie Wright from Wright Brothers. And then we open up to see the, the great crowd that we have here. I am impressed. Here's Dave Forwood and uh, Charlie Goldfish sitting there at the score table. Charlie, we were at his uh, house a few weeks ago, LaRue Lanes. Not the way you want to start the show with a uh, fairly difficult spare. Going wide on the first ball, Tommy, leaving the two, four, eight. Don Waddell you're looking at, folks. This is his first time on our telecast. He's been qualifying for a couple of years. But if he looks familiar, Jen, why does he look familiar, huh? Well, that is because Don is the only person to have won or broke, however you want to put that, our golden ball. The first week from Glenn Schmitz, Don uh, came right through and threw that strike. Crusher from the corner, if I recall. He just absolutely blitzed him. But this time opening up against Randy Smith with a nine out, Don knows that that's not a healthy thing to do against this man. Absolutely not. 279 in the roll-off, had a 258 in our first game of the telecast, which you just saw, and uh, not the way to start off. Dave, uh, you and I were talking in the in a little bit earlier. I want to ask you, between games, the guy who has just won, in this case it's Randy, how important are his practice balls in between games to keep that line? I'm, I'm not so sure to keep the line is, is the primary concern, Tommy, but like I told you, the tempo tempo in this game to me is everything and randy did he walked around he had a coke he enjoyed himself he talked to the people and he was comfortable with the shot but his tempo changed and he threw the first ball wide there you go you cover up the spare though and no harm done absolutely not well dave you headed out to durban bowl today no i am no. gonna go out to uh clovernook uh, with the kids we're gonna hunt up some easter baskets and then we're going to go to a mom's for a home-cooked meal, you know? Sounds good. You betcha. Nothing like mom's cooking. <laughs> well, I don't know. My mother, uh, she's been accused of burning water, but uh, <laughs> on uh, on Easter, I love you, Mom, on Easter, she does a bang-up job for dinner. That's for sure. Right. Get this. <laughs> That's a bang-up job, all right. Wow, was that a great shot. Now, he's got the tempo back, Tommy, like... You know, as we discuss, the uh, crashing you hear in the background is Jerry Eckel warming up down on lanes one and two on the other side of this very unique setup here, Jen. Yeah, I, I really, I'm, this is, play, <laughs> like, pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. This place really is interesting. It has the stonework almost all over the place. It's put up new masking units. It's just, it's beautiful. It really is. Glenn Schmidt's done a fantastic job, Jen. I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's a great little place to bowl, 16 lanes. This is the kind of establishment that the game really blossomed in this country years and years ago, Tommy. And then it's evolved into the super centers mm -hmm. that we call the uh, the uh, 48 and up lane houses. But this is where it all started, right here. Yeah, he's, and Wayne Piles is the manager here, and Wayne... Uh, went to school. Where did he go to school, Dave? Well, he went he, to college for... It, yeah, he went to college uh, and majored in bowling. And it's a very interesting story. And after Don throws this, we'll get into that a little bit. And we'll get a shot of him here on camera. We'll point him out. Well, Don but, Waddell is not starting off to his liking a little bit. But there's a way to turn things for the better. The hand slap he's saying, yeah, let's there get on with this what, thing. What can a change of equipment do for you? It can give you the hook you're not getting with your other ball. There you go. 15th board. He splits the third arrow. Now watch the roll. The other ball backed off here. Uh-uh. Not the red hammer. Cuts through. 10 pin. Late, but it's out of there. And I'll tell you what, Randy Smith better take note of that shot. Randy trying to answer back. Wow, now it looked there like he really got a break because he missed the line and went high. It was, Tommy, and we can see it on the replay here. The head pin, center of your screen, is going to go straight back. The two pin, second one from the middle, is going to cause the damage. Now watch this. The ball is going to take the two head pin straight back. Now that's the two pin going to the left wall. The two pin takes out the 4-7. Working overtime, give that pin a check. Don Waddell is 24 years old, and he's single. And his dad uh, was on the AMS staff and retired, which is a, uh, they do a lot with the game. These Brunswick and AMF people really uh, keep the game what it is. You're right. And right there, we were talking about Wayne, uh, 
just to Randy's, uh, right under his left elbow there, you can see him a little bit. We'll take a look at the score. And uh, the score is going to show us that uh, Randy Smith is in the lead right now by 20 pins. Strike working in the third, but so does his opponent, and he loses the advantage in the fourth without striking. But he's got a 20-pin advantage at this point. So if he can just cruise along, pick up spares like, oh, mercy. You don't want to do that. Absolutely. Not many times have we seen that over the weeks of the telecast where one pin standing, a little lack of concentration, you miss it, and boy, it can come back to haunt you more times than not. Well, I'm not saying he didn't, but I did not see him shoot very many cross-lane spares in the warm-ups, Tommy. And again, that should be something you should do. Know the surface you're bowling on. Uh, Randy wishes he had that one back. We'll see if Don jumps on opportunity right here. Absolutely. It's knocking. It is knocking. He'd like to knock down 10 of them right here. Look out. Went to the opposite side. Oh, the ball he went to for a little extra hook, and he didn't trust it. If you're going to make an equipment change, don't counteract the equipment change by changing your release, and that's exactly what you saw. Right there. Pulled the ball straight through the head pin. He uh, has a high game of 300, and I believe they've all been rolled this year, and he's had three of them. Holy cow. He practices 30 games a week, so he's very into the game. Got the spare. But when you're, you see him kind of talking to himself there a little bit, saying just easy does it. Got a long way to go, as Dave and Jennifer so awfully referred to as a lot of paper. That's right. There's Wayne right there in a red tie. Let's see if we... There he is. Come on, Wayne. Look at us. Uh, he started with uh, Glenn Schmitz way back when. First job ever in... Uh, age 14 back in 1979 he started as a porter and he's worked his way up through the ranks to this point and that's what Boland's all about you can do it if you want to Don Waddell comes back with a great shot on lane nine and I tell you what we are going to be back in just a few minutes after a word from a couple of our sponsors Last week at Holly Lane's, Jerry Eccle shot a 177, defeating the king Bob Schomer to become our current champion. Lee's Famous Recipe salutes Jerry Eccle on becoming this week's King of Bowling. Hey, did you hear that Little Kings won a gold medal at the Great American Beer Festival? Yeah, some distinguished panel of experts finally discovered what some of us have known all along. It's not some panel of experts that makes Little King so good. It's that great smooth taste that comes from Little King's specialized brewing process and finest quality ingredients. <laughs> Better stock up before the tourists arrive. Little King's, as always, first in its class. 13 years in the award business makes Carl's Bowler's Paddock the award professionals. Providing engraved plaques and trophies for any purpose in any size. And, of course, Carl's carries a complete line of bowling supplies and accessories. Carl's Bowlers Paddock, A25-2200. Look for our new location coming soon. Today's bowling tip is being brought to you by West Hills Ford. If powders aren't used properly, we can have some big problems. So if you see somebody doing this, Ask them not to. Or you might also see this. Don't use powders on your shoes, please. There are safe products available that work, and can be purchased at your local pro shop. Just ask. Another problem we see too many times is, well, too much stuff on the scoring table. This area is reserved for score marking only. Not towels, cigarettes, drinks. <laughs> because after all, accidents can happen. It comes down to common sense. Sure, it's your night out, and we want you to have fun. But be considerate of the equipment and the other bowlers. Today's bowling tip is being brought to you by West Hills Ford. There you see it. Eight pins advantage. Randy Smith will be up on lane 10. And right there, we are going to wish happy birthday to Paul Kalen, better known as 
Waylon Paul Kalen. I can't wait for that story. Happy birthday, Paul. Waylon Paul Kalen will touch that with a 10-foot no pole. No way, Jose. Absolutely not. <laughs> Don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole either. Was that ugly? Man, I'll tell you what. Randy Smith throws an incredibly strong ball, and this is evidence of it. This ball is going to be high for any normal human being. It's a 4-9 split. Uh-uh. Watch this action. Head pin goes back. That's a three pin going. Two pin going to the wall. Takes the four out. And the ball gave the little momentum to the nine. Out of here for a strike. Everybody needs a break. When you throw a ball like that, <laughs> you get the breaks, I'll you tell do. you. You create some breaks. And that strike maintains his eight pin advantage. Going to try to reinforce that, and he does. Well, he's really on. He's talking to him down there, no doubt about it. What's our score look like at this point? Well, it's an eight pin advantage for Randy Smith. With a strike working, you can give him another 10, 18 up, but uh, Don can cut that by 10 with striking here. Gentleman in the glasses there to the left, you see Sam Coleman. Of course, he has been around the BPA for a long, long time, and what a gentleman he is. Indeed. He's been around longer than some of the dust in the gutters. Uh, <laughs> Easy not, I, I love him. I tell you, if it's not for people like Sam, this game would have not come light years the way it has. A dedication of people. Don Waddell throws a great shot on lane 10. Cuts the lead back to eight pins. Both players with a double working. I think they're lined up now. Look for nothing but X's across the board. Here as we head into Don Waddell's seventh frame. Yeah, we'll take a quick opportunity here. Steve Fair's team, uh, five-man team, is uh, in the state tournament up in Middletown. Moved into first place action with 34, 40. Great right. bowling guys. Bill Heflin and Terry Rose, or uh, Bill Heflin and Rick Hensley, 1369. Actual and handicap first. And as we watch that crasher, yeah. Terry Rose and Chris Woods, 1364, are in second place. Absolutely fantastic. Puts the pressure right back on Randy Smith. Boy, this is one good match. We got don't go away. Please don't go away. We got lots of strikes coming here. As Dave has referred to many times, get somebody else to fetch that hootie. <laughs> Your dog, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Mine's going to do that for me. Big Look. shot for Randy. Oh, he's talking to him. He's talking to him now. Don Waddell and Randy Smith going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Two heavyweights going at it, at least in the ball category. Here we go. One three pocket filled up. Come on, he says. Yeah, one three pockets filled up. No problems here, Randy. That ball was perfect. <laughs> Once again, we are qualifying this weekend at Durban Bowl, and next weekend we will be qualifying at Glenmore Lanes. Shifts begin at 9 a.m. both days, Saturday and Sunday, and they run every hour and a half. There you go. That's the way you make the game interesting. Pile up the strikes. A four-bagger, Randy Smith, gives him 137 in the sixth frame. Don Waddell has to keep answering strike for strike to stay eight pins down. Oh, I can't stand it. This is terrific. Boy, we are seeing some shooting. If you're curious at home, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I've seen nothing but strikes. You're dead on the money. There has been seven in a row, both of these players combined. Since we've come back from the commercial exactly. break, Tommy, you're absolutely right. Strike for strike, every shot has importance at this point. Don Waddell, right lane, frame eight, must strike to stay eight pins down. Looks good. Down they go. He's going to taunt those pins. Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Get we're both, out of there. We're both getting into it right now. I tell you, these, uh, these guys are players. If Don quit stepping into our camera shot. We'd show you a replay of one of his, but he's always in the way. He gets excited and runs around a little bit. He got excited that first week, as you talked about, the fact that he uh, was our golden ball winner. Take a look at that. There you see it. Eight pins is still the difference in these two players, both of them, with strikes in the seventh and eighth frame, coming down to that critical ninth frame part of the game. Always critical. Talked about many times, you like to build on that ninth. Absolutely. And Don could really put the pressure on one Randy Smith. If he could knock down nothing but X's across the board in 9 and 10. If you're going to squeeze it, this would be where you squeeze it. And he did not. He threw a great shot. Absolutely fantastic. The most important shot of the match, Don Waddell throws an absolute screamer 
one three pocket is going to take all the abuse here no deflection on the ball watch it roll through the pins yeah he wants it. <laughs> no deflection there absolutely perfect ten in the pit every pin doing its job he looks like he's not playing the uh, the break as he was earlier in the, the hook as he was earlier in the ball game Look out. oh Boy. my now what a bad time you see the reaction on Randy's part he knows that was an important shot like I said, if you're going to squeeze it, you're going to squeeze it in the ninth frame when you have to have it. That ball, Randy Smith, did not trust. The thing that got him here was the big arc, the big ball, the big turn, and he didn't use it. Goes right straight through the heart. He leaves the three, six, four, seven, <laughs> ten. And what you have to do, remember the split he made before, Tommy? Mm -hmm. He's got to throw that exact same ball again, and he can bring this back. He's going after it's it. Close. It's close. Oh! To see. What a spare by Randy Smith. He did exactly what you said, David. You absolutely have to watch this one and keep it in your video library for the next hundred years. Uh, one pitcher's worth a thousand words. That's absolutely <laughs> Well, he unmade it. I don't know about no, that. Hey, I tell you. No, it counts. We'll leave it on the sheet. Okay, that's fair. I, I tell you, that I was wouldn't want to. interesting. <laughs> That's right. I just wouldn't want to be the guy to tell Randy we're taking those away from you, guy. Uh-uh. Not me. I'll tell you what. You talked about counting this game. Yeah, it's important. The five count absolutely crushed him. Don Waddell now has the advantage by seven pins in his direction. If he strikes in the first ball in the tenth, that'll just about sew it up. How quickly things change. Without a doubt. And, I mean, you pick up a spare like that, but mercy, you, all of a sudden, you might be the loser. If he doesn't throw this one, there's a very good chance he'll be the loser. He's got to have it. I'll tell you what, that is a fine piece of bowling by Randy Smith. He might not end up winning this game. But after that five spot came right back with the... Oh, I, I really? guess it's an understatement to say Im impressive spare. That five count was really his only Aaron shot of the match. All the other ones were right there. And, of course, he did miss the 10 pin, which hurt him a lot earlier in the game. Now, count becomes a factor again. He's got to get seven or better on this shot to force Don Waddell to strike on the first ball in the 10th. And he got seven plus three. Now, ladies and gentlemen... Don't, don't go away. We keep saying it again, but don't. This, this is what Bowen's all about. Don Waddell knows he has to throw the first one in the tenth, or he does not go to the championship match. All right, now, if he throws the first strike in the tenth, does that lock him in as our winner, or do, what does he has to follow up with? Randy well, Smith watching basically, on. basically any kind of uh, count from that point on, Tommy, a seven-count spare would do it. But there will be no tomorrow if this ball is not a strike. Taking a little extra time. The red hammer. Look at him kind of sighting it up there. It's got to be a strike or there's no tomorrow. Looks good. Oh. Tell you what, he's showing me something. That's a pressure shot. Two pressure shots, Tommy. Absolutely perfect. Ninth frame was great. Tenth frame, phenomenal. Don Waddell. Has, has earned a spot into the championship match at this point. Look at him. He knows he likes it. He throws a rope. Wow. This is his first time on TV, too. That was doubly impressive for that sheer fact. Certainly he didn't start knows. bowling until he was 19 years old. He's now 24. So he's and I believe a he's way. a winner. Yep. Yes, he is. It's out of here. Well, Jen, that's very, uh, well, I guess remarkable to say the least that a guy doesn't start bowling until 19 years of age and to come this far. Boy, that is. Five years. He's really come a long way. That was a good pressure shot. He showed us what he's made of. You betcha. 240 he's going to finish with. A fantastic game, but more impressive than that is throwing the strikes when you need them. He came on with a flurry, Don Waddell, and now he moves on to our championship match. He and Jerry Eckel will have at it in just a moment.
Last week, during our untelevised Youth King of Bowling, Randy Anderson shot a 673 with handicap at Holly Lanes to become our Youth Bowler of the Week. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation, salutes Randy Anderson. Free Diet Pepsi, the taste that's generations ahead. Want to go bowling? I'd be delighted. Come on, get with it. The shield of fun. Grab the flavor that's number one. I know the way that it's just I'm Mike Schott for Cincinnati's Brewery, and welcome to the 25th anniversary of the Hewitt Pole King of Bowling. Back when this show began in 1963, Cincinnati was enjoying its 175th birthday, and Cincinnatians were enjoying the great taste of Hewitt Pole 14K. Well now, 25 years later, we're getting ready to toast the King of Bowling and Cincinnati's 200th birthday by bringing back the great taste of 14K. The Cincinnati